I focus is on young people doing very, very, very amazing things, you know. Uh, coming up much later, I'll be talking to Prince Dovlo, uh, very visually creative. He's a genius when it comes to visual creativity, and we'll be talking to him. But before then, I wanted to meet another young lady who's doing so much in terms of empowering young women between 13 and 18 to, to find their feet. And she's also a writer, she's a documentarist, she's a host, she's an event manager, she's everything. Put your hands together, let her welcome Ivy Prosper! There we go, there, 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 there we go. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Well, it's good, you know, I, I always look out for people who are doing dynamic things. Some we know already. Some are also hiding in the scenes doing great stuff, mm -hmm. but I want to introduce you to the public like you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. But you, you've been, a, you've done a lot with, uh, your background is in public speaking. You host, you, tell me. Um, I, I have a, a, a diverse range of things that I've done throughout my career. So I do have a background in fashion. Mm -hmm. uh, as well as in radio and television broadcasting and then with the public speaking. Mm -hmm. So with the public speaking, I actually had been doing that for over 10 years where I speak to young girls mm -hmm. and young women on empowering themselves, on becoming a better woman in the future and learning the things that they need to be strong, to know their voice, and to be able to pursue their dreams. Mm. So I've been doing that where I would tour around schools and organizations and talk to young girls, and I'm actually planning on doing that here in Ghana, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, as far as media and television, I've worked as a presenter, I've worked on red carpets, mm. and, um, and I do film production. Yeah, yeah. Great, man. Show some love, man. Show <laughs> So with regards to the empowerment of uh, young girls, empowerment of women's empowerment, I know that there's a program in the works, something that you are planning to put out? Yes. I've actually launched an initiative called African Women on the Move, which is all about promoting positive things about African women across the continent, continent and in the diaspora. Mm. So this particular one that you're mentioning that I'm going to be doing is actually a workshop seminar for young girls mm. between the ages of 13 to 18, where they get a chance to come and hear women, phenomenal women who have experiences in different industries, who will teach them and empower them and inspire them on things they can do, whether it's working in media, it's working in education, or if it's a science they want to do, engineering. We'll have women who are experienced in different industries there to help teach them and guide them and give mm -hmm. them an I idea of if it's what they want to do. Because when you're 13, 14, 15, you think, you're still, yeah. I want to do this yeah. or that, but I don't know how or I don't know who to talk mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. the, this is very interesting. This is just another aspect of it. There seems to be a lot of focus now, empowering women, you know, mm -hmm. programs that feature on girls, I, I talked to somebody who was doing uh, girls in ICT, stuff like that. Um, has it gotten to the point where the focus is now purely on women's empowerment, girls and things, and that the poor old boys are being sort of left out? Do you, do you feel that? Because I've had that. <laughs> you know, it's really funny because I always hear the yeah. boys and the men yeah. making their comments on like International Women's Day to mm -hmm. say, why isn't there a men's day? What mm -hmm. about us? But the thing is, a lot of men don't realize you've been born with a privilege that you don't even realize you have. Mm. Your whole lives, you've had the opportunity to do things that girls don't always get encouraged to do. So for example, if you're in a household and you're, um, you're a family who doesn't have much money when it comes to schooling, the parents usually will choose to send the boy to school over the mm. girl. Mm. Why? Mm. Even if the girl might be more brilliant than the boy is, they'll send the boy just because well, that's what you do. You want the boy to grow up to be a man who's going to take care of the family, take care of his household, and the woman's going to stay home and take care of the family anyway, so why educate her? Mm -hmm. That's the mm -hmm. thinking that mm -hmm. some people mm -hmm. have. I'm not saying it's everyone, but, yeah. but it yeah. tends to be a natural thing in a lot of countries, not just in Ghana, but yeah. everywhere around the world. So girls aren't always given the push that boys are naturally. So sometimes girls become timid and decide, well, why am I even going to bother if mm. it's not going to be given to me anyway? Mm. So when you look at statistics and studies, they always talk about that if girls are educated, if mm. girls are given the opportunity, it actually benefits the family. 
It really does. Because if you think about it, if a girl is educated, she's brilliant, she's raising her kids. Mm. What is she teaching them? Right? And that's not to say a girl who's not educated or a woman who's not educated can't teach her children, because of course she can, because she has knowledge that many people don't have. When you mm. see the way mm. a woman runs mm. a household, mm. it's, it's amazing. But I think the shift is happening because people are recognizing without girls, the world is not 100% complete. Mm. We mm. need each other for mm. the balance mm. to get things mm. done. Mm. And so all these programs are coming out because it's giving us an opportunity to teach each other and to teach the young people who are coming for the future. So you believe there's a gap? Yeah. There's been a gap. There's sort of be so, something like an affirmative action to now place the focus yes, on women yes, to catch up, yes, more or less. Definitely, yeah. definitely. The focus needs to be there because there are many, many young women who can do it. And young women can know that they can rely on their minds and not just their bodies to get ahead. Because a lot of women think, oh, I have to do this and this and this in order to get this. But you don't always have to sacrifice mm. your self-respect and your dignity in order to get yourself ahead. You can use your, your smarts to do it too. Mm -hmm. But the sort of like the, the prevailing, not prevailing, but the general notion is that, well, women have got a body, so there are other things they can resort to. But <laughs> no, no, I understand what you're saying, but I'm saying that's, that's, what, that's what I hear you. you. Yeah. Yeah. I hear yeah. you. I hear you. Cause so women's body sells, sex sells. And yeah. it's been like that since the beginning of time. When we yeah. look at old paintings, ancient paintings, we see the female mm. figure, the female form being admired. So it's something that's always been there. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm glad you brought this up because we're going to segue into something that was recently in the news a lot about mm -hmm. what Moisha has said. And I know that, uh, CNN contacted your company or you were partly responsible for selecting, get, what's, what's the scoop on that? I work as a producer with a company called Refined Creative. Mm. They are based here in Ghana and also have offices in the US. And um, we were um, hired to collaborate with the crew from CNN when they came to Ghana to mm. film the mm. series mm. Sex and Love Around the World um, with Christian Amanpour. And Ghana went a little bit wild and crazy when the one minute clip on Moesha was released um, with some of the statements she made. Now, the whole process of, because um, one of the number one questions I get asked is, why did you choose Moesha to be on the show? And we as the Ghana crew, we were responsible for gathering the people who were going to be on the program. So with that aspect, we were asked by CNN to get that side of the story. They want women who live a lifestyle where they have men who take care of them. Mm. And it exists. People who deny it does not exist are lying to themselves because every day it happens yeah. in Ghana yeah. And, yeah. and around the world. So we talked to many, many women who said, yes, they this is that. a lifestyle I live. Yes, I date married men. Yes, I date men for money. Yes, I have this man who does this and this man who does that and this one who does my hair, this one for my nails, this one for this, <laughs> whatever it is. But I'm not coming on camera to talk about it. Mm. So the whole thing is most women didn't want to come on camera to talk about it. She was the only one who was brave enough to speak on it. She has spoken on it before mm -hmm. on the delay show. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was no surprise mm -hmm. when she did. I think a lot of people um, took it out of context when she said women in Ghana when she made her statement. And she really wasn't referring to all women in Ghana. She was talking about a group of people who do do that, who do live a lifestyle of you have men who take care of you. And so they feel like, well, why not? If this man is willing to do it, why don't I accept it? And it's a choice that some people make and it's not for everyone and it doesn't represent everyone and if people watch the whole show which i know is circulating online right now it's a one-hour program and there's other characters in the show not just her mm, it represents mm, different mm, aspects mm, of of mm, Ghanaian society mm. when it comes to sex and faith and think, love and yeah. relationships what, what 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 did the disservice to the whole thing of course they wanted to make it exciting so the clip they chose to show and that's all people saw, you right. know. I haven't seen the full one, for example, right. you know. But I just saw this clip where she was saying, well, in Ghana, women have to do this. And I think that's where... People got a little yeah. bit out, out of hand and, yeah. and excited. 
Um, we didn't have any control over what clip was edited to mm -hmm, show for the mm -hmm, promotion. Mm -hmm. um, but it was interesting that that was the clip that yeah. people hung on to because three clips came out on the same day and it was her, um, the market woman who talked about being a first wife or a second wife okay. and how you have to share love. Mm. And then um, a man, a fisherman who talked about that because he's poor, he doesn't have a mistress. Mm. That if he had money, he would have a mistress. Mm. So those three stories came out and people hung on to the Moesha story. Yeah. So it, it's a matter of what people gravitated to. Mm. And, and I feel like maybe because the response was so strong to that, mm. it may be a reflection of how big of the an problem. issue that is that in is, the country. Yeah, yeah. You know, Because yeah. I get approached by men mm. offering me things. Mm. I don't take it because I know that there's, there's often strings attached. And sometimes I say that my career could be further ahead if I was willing to do certain things that I'm not willing to do. I'm not willing to sleep with a man to get a job. So if a man comes to me and thinks I'm gonna sleep with him to get something, he can look for someone else because it's not gonna be me. <laughs> But um, it's an unfortunate thing that mm -hmm. a lot of women mm -hmm. deal mm -hmm. with. And the whole Me Too that they talked about and that came out of the U.S., women are dealing with sexual harassment yeah. on a daily basis. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, cool. You are, what, what, what aspect of you is, were you born in Ghana or just... Uh... I was born in Ghana mm -hmm. and we left when I was a child to Canada. Okay. So I spent most of my life in Canada mm. and we would come on visits back to Ghana, come for funeral and... Um, and then I made the decision some years ago that I would stay and work in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So I was here for a few years. I came in 2011 and I stayed for a few years and then I had gone back, um, stayed for a couple of years there. And then I came back again in 2016 mm -hmm. to stay, mm -hmm. to just, I'm so you're not here. Back, back, I'm not back, 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 yeah. I'm here. Yeah. Where are parents? My father passed away 11 years ago. Okay. My mom is in Canada. She comes on visits, but she's in Canada. Mm, yeah. Mm. Do they, does she want you back there, or she's happy you're not settled here? She has mixed feelings. Um, sometimes she says that she, she wants me to be happy, but at the same time, it's a little bit um, surprising that after going to Canada, that now I've made a choice to, to come, come back to Ghana. You basically grew up there, right? Most I, of yeah, yeah, I basically grew up there. I did grow up there. Mm, I spent my mm, formative years there. Mm. But at the same time, I always felt this thing, this connection with Ghana. Like when I was in high school, I would do artwork that was like African inspired art. I did my fashion that I used the African prints. My parents had started a business called Classic Imports where they were bringing in Ghanaian fabrics mm, to sell. Mm. And I would use that stuff and I would sew it. I would make dresses. I made my prom dress out of some Ghanaian fabric and people always remember me for that. Um, so I've always felt a connection mm. to, to being Ghanaian. And also when you're in another country, uh, that's primarily white, you're always being asked where you're from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Always like, oh, you can't really be you from be, here. Yeah, it's yeah. always, oh, where, where are you from? Where are you really from? And so I was always having to claim that I was Ghanaian mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. So that, because of that constant, well, I'm Ghanaian, I'm Ghanaian, I felt like this is where I'm from, this is my home, that one day I probably would end up going mm -hmm. back, and, and mm -hmm. eventually mm -hmm. I did. The funny thing is, now that I'm here, I get every day, oh, you're not a Ghanaian. <laughs> You're not a Ghanaian. You're not a Ghanaian. Well, is the uh, every day. Man, you can tell. Yes, from the accent. It's always, oh, you're not Ghanaian. Yeah, you're not, you're not, yeah. You know, even my, my Uber driver on my way here today was even, you're not a Ghanaian. You're Tonation. You're not a Ghanaian. <laughs> so, um, uh, final question. You're thinking of Ghanaian, Ghanaian man? How is the Ghanaian man seen? Uh, did you... Are you going to settle on the Ghanaian man or are you going to go back to Canada and find a... The Ghanaian men scene? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm six foot one. For mm -hmm. people who don't know, I'm a very tall woman. Yeah. And uh, it is hard finding tall men. Um, <laughs> and it seems like tall men like really short women. They really do. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, then us, so then us tall women... The short men are always chasing after us. All these like really tiny, tiny men. I'm just like, <laughs> you know. So, um, but yeah, no. Would it matter for you? Um, I do prefer a taller man. You, I have what? dated shorter men, but I do prefer a taller, taller man. man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But as far as the the dating scene, I feel like the dating scene is difficult everywhere mm -hmm. because it's mm -hmm. trying to match two human beings mm -hmm. who have their own interests, their own desires, their own dreams, and trying to come together 
and and meet halfway to be a partnership mm -hmm. so no matter mm -hmm. where you are mm -hmm. there's always a challenge i mean for here there's some challenges with respect to um if you've never traveled your your thought is different than someone who has traveled yeah. so uh, it is easier for me connecting with people who've traveled and having traveled doesn't mean you've lived somewhere your whole life it could just mean you took a flight to kenya yeah. you took a flight to south africa yeah. you were there for a few days and you saw something else so when you leave the borders of your own country your mind is more open to seeing other things even within your own country, if you can't afford to travel, because not everybody can afford to travel, I always say to people, you have to travel. You have to. I've been across this whole country, except the Upper East and Upper West. And when you see other parts of Ghana, you really get more of an mm. understanding mm. of, oh, well, it's like this over here. That's why this person thinks this way, because over here, this is what they do. So you can understand other people better when you travel, and then you can understand yourself as well, because you can grow. <laughs> so, um, and a final, final, final question. So, it means you're single, basically. <laughs> I'm not married. You're not married. Shout out, man. Okay. <laughs> I did it. it was good. It was good hugging out with you. <laughs> and uh, give us more information the, the closer it gets to your empowerment show for, for the sure, for yeah, sure. so that we can publish that here for sure you and know. people can stay updated you can go to my website okay. my website is just my name ivyprosper.com so ivyprosper.com is my website um you can send me messages through there because it'll go directly to my personal email and then mm. i can always respond but i will keep you posted with updates fantastic on that. yeah and the email is on your screen website is on the screen right now as you can see it please get in touch go there and check out and then of course we'll be giving you more information as this whole empowerment crusade draws near because it's very 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 important as you said in the beginning you know um somehow ladies have been left out a lot the females uh, uh, should I say the, or the girls have been left out a lot and it's time to really build them up. They are, you guys are doing great work though because I went to this um, school for a presentation, what was it, awards there or something, it's all the ladies, it was mm -hmm. a miss school, you mm -hmm. know, but now it's all the ladies, you know, yeah. medical school, all the ladies, you know, so whatever you're doing to catch up, I think you're really past us now. I think we are caught up. Yeah, yeah almost, you're caught up. Almost, yeah, almost. Yeah, almost. almost there. Yeah. All right. Show us all one more time. Coming up, we're going to be talking to Prince Javro, one of the very, very creative young guys we have around us. Stick around, we'll be right back.